Hey guys, welcome back to Artificial Intelligence Crash Course. This would be episode 9, and today we're going to be talking about the philosophy and defining of artificial intelligence, starting with Alan Turing's description of the Turing test. Alan Turing wrote in 1950, I propose to consider the question, can machines think? He advised changing the question from whether a machine thinks to whether or not it's possible for machinery to show intelligent behavior. He devised the Turing test, which measures the ability of a machine to simulate human conversation. The only thing visible is the behavior of the machine, so it doesn't matter if the machine is conscious or has a mind or whether the intelligence is merely a simulation and not the real thing. Russell and Norvig are critical of the Turing test if it is used as the definition of artificial intelligence. Aeronautical engineering texts, they wrote, do not define the goal of their field as making machines that fly so exactly like pigeons that they can fool other pigeons. AI founder John McCarthy agreed, writing that artificial intelligence is not, by definition, simulation of human intelligence. The intelligent agent paradigm defines intelligent behavior in general without reference to human beings. So saying that there is an objective boundary that doesn't require our subjective opinion because humans can be easily fooled and so it's not really a valid metric to use as describing the intelligence of AI. An intelligent agent is a system that perceives its environment and takes actions that can maximize its chances of success. Any system that has goal-directed behavior can be analyzed as an intelligent agent. Something as simple as a thermostat, or as complex as a human being, as well as large systems such as firms, biomes, or nations. The intelligent agent paradigm became widely accepted during the 1990s and currently serves as the definition of the field. The intelligent agent paradigm has other advantages for AI. It provides a reliable and scientific way to test programs. Researchers can directly compare or even combine different approaches to isolated problems by asking which agent is best at maximizing a given goal function. It also gives them a common language to communicate with other fields, such as mathematical optimization, which is defined in terms of goals or economics, which uses the same definition of a rational agent. So, the next session is on evaluating approaches to artificial intelligence. No established unifying theory or paradigm has guided AI research for most of its history. The unprecedented success of statistical machine learning in the 2010s eclipsed all other approaches, so much so that some sources, especially in the business world, use the term artificial intelligence to mean machine learning with neural networks. This approach is mostly sub-symbolic, neat, soft, and narrow. Critics argue that these questions may have to be revisited by future generations of AI researchers. Okay. Next section is on symbolic AI and its limits. Symbolic AI, or GOFAI, simulated the high-level conscious reasoning that people use when they solve puzzles, express legal reasoning, and do mathematics. They were highly successful at intelligent tasks such as algebra or IQ tests. In the 1960s, Newell and Simon proposed the physical symbol systems hypothesis. A physical symbol system has the necessary and sufficient means of general intelligent action. However, the symbolic approach failed dismally on many tasks that humans could solve easily, such as learning, recognizing the object, or common sense reasoning. More of X paradox is the discovery that high-level intelligent tasks were easy for AI, but low-level instinctive tasks were extremely difficult. Philosopher Hubert Dreyfus had argued since the 1960s that human expertise depends on unconscious instinct rather than conscious symbol manipulation and on having a feel for the situation rather than explicit symbolic knowledge. Although his arguments had been ridiculed and ignored when they first presented, and eventually AI research came to, degree, came to agree. The issue is not resolved. Sub-symbolic reasoning can make many of the same inscrutinable mistakes that human intuition does, such as algorithmic bias. Critics such as Noam Chomsky argue continuing research into symbolic AI will still be necessary to attain general intelligence, in part because sub-symbolic AI is a move away from explainable AI. It can be difficult or impossible to understand why a modern statistical AI program made a particular decision. The emerging field of neurosymbolic artificial intelligence attempts to bridge the two approaches. So basically talking about an algorithm that can be observed and it has a stream of consciousness that can be seen versus algorithmic artificial intelligence where sometimes it's difficult to pick it out. So in a previous video we talked about an algorithm that had certain nodes lit for certain characteristics. When the number of characteristics gets into the millions and billions and there's many different feed forward and feedback words and 
you know, many deep layers, then suddenly it becomes impossible to make a readable AI that you can determine how it's thinking, what it's thinking. And that's what would be necessary to make a neurosymbolic artificial intelligence that can be related back to humans. So this is the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to be talking about neat versus scruffy, soft versus hard computing, and narrow versus general, and then machine consciousness, sentience, and the mind.